and welcome to our third video in the series about lungs and today we're going to look at gas exchange and dissociation curves. And so if we look at some key terms, um, specifically gaseous exchange, so this is the process of the swapping over oxygen and CO2, so what you want is oxygen moving into the bloodstream and CO2 moving from the bloodstream into the lungs and out. Partial pressure um, is the pressure a gas exerts in the mi uh, mixture of gases, so for instance if we looked at atmospheric air then nitrogen would have the highest partial pressure, then oxygen, then argon, um, and then CO2. The next term um, is diffusion, so this is a movement of gases from an area of high partial pressure to an area of low partial pressure until you reach an equilibrium, and the diffusion gradient, and so this is the difference um, in terms of the pressure between the area of high concentration or high partial pressure and low partial pressure. The bigger the gradient, um, the greater the rate of diffusion and all rate means is how quickly something happens. So another couple of key terms you might come across, one is external respiration um, and this involves the movement of oxygen and CO2 between the alveoli and the capillaries within the lungs. So we can think of the external respiration being involved in the lungs um, and what you're aiming to do is to get as much oxygen into the blood um, and then removing as much CO2 from it as well. So internal respiration, this is to do with the movement of oxygen and CO2 um, from the blood into the tissues. And so the aim is to get as much oxygen um, to the tissues as possible and therefore to, um, to remove as much CO2 from the tissues as possible. All of these processes only happen if a concentration gradient is set up and on the next um, slide we'll see how that happens. So this diagram explains how a concentration gradient is set up and if we start with um, the pulmonary arteries, so these are the ones going um, blood vessels to the lungs, so effectively these are carrying, um, these are come back from the tissues that have been respiring and so they have a high concentration of a partial pressure of carbon dioxide um, and a reasonably low partial pressure of oxygen and the reason for that is it's because the cells have been respiring um, and so they've made CO2 and the fact that they've been respiring means that they've used up the oxygen. Um, and so as these return to the lungs, the actual composition of the air found within the alveoli has got a lot of oxygen in it and less CO2. And so what happens is because the partial pressure is much, much higher um, for oxygen um, in the alveoli than it is within this capillary bed, therefore the oxygen then moves into the bloodstream. The CO2... Um, because it's much higher within the pulmonary artery, so within this capillary bed, that will then move into the alveoli and hence equalise that out. And so what you end up with um, is this distribution here. And so you end up with the blood that's now going back to the heart has now got a load of oxygen and it's removed, um, in this case, um, six parts um, in arbitrary units of the um, carbon dioxide. So the partial pressure has actually gone down by six. And so the blood then um, goes to the heart where it's then pumped um, to the rest of the body and it goes in the systemic artery. So the first artery that we go in will be the aorta. And again, it has the same partial pressures um, as it does in two, as it has in three here. So these values are the same. When it then begins to reach the tissues, what happens is if you look at the tissue and the partial pressure of oxygen within the tissue, it's 40. And the partial pressure of CO2 is 46. Again, What's happening here is the tissues are respiring, so they're using up the oxygen, hence the low concentration or the low partial pressure, and they're producing CO2, so that's why it has a higher partial pressure of CO2. And so as um, the blood enters the capillary bed, you're going to get the oxygen moving from an area of high concentration, which is in the capillaries, to an area of low concentration, so that's into the tissues. And because um, the tissues have much more CO2 in them, than they do than the um, capillary bed, the CO2 moves the other way. You then get the blood moving back um, to the heart and is then pumped back to the lungs and we start the whole cycle again. Now the reason why this um, continually sets up concentration gradients is you're constantly breathing, so you're constantly renewing the level of oxygen um, and the levels of CO2 found within the alveoli and you're constantly, um, your heart is contracting and therefore it's moving blood through constantly and therefore the concentration gradient will be set up each time the blood moves through. 
without this system um, you wouldn't be able to get adequate oxygen to your cells so they wouldn't be able to respire and you wouldn't be able to get rid of the carbon dioxide um, which is a waste product and can be dangerous at higher levels so if you join me in my next video where we'll be looking at dissociation curves